Hello and welcome. My name is Andrea Pinsani. I am a member of GAR cybersecurity team. In this short video I will talk about firewalls. Firewall is a term widely used in the information technology security market. The word firewall can indicate a physical device or a software program, but maybe it's better to say that it's a concept or a network security architecture designed to prevent unauthorized access. Basically, a firewall is a barrier between an internal network and other untrusted networks, such as the Internet. All the traffic that enters or leaves the internal network passes through the firewall that controls all the communication and enforces security rules. A firewall can be classified as a network firewall that runs on a dedicated hardware or host-based firewall that runs on a host computer and control only the traffic of that machine. Over the years, several types of increasingly complex firewalls have been developed, which examine a greater number of parameters to determine if a certain traffic should pass or not. Packet filters is the most basic firewall type. It performs a simple check of the values in the packet header, such as IP addresses, protocols and port numbers. A data packet is blocked if it matches a certain set of rules. This kind of firewalls are simple and require few resources, but they are also relatively easy to bypass. The packet filtering function is included on most network routers. The stateful firewall is now considered a traditional firewall. It keeps track of all outgoing network traffic using a state table and only allows incoming traffic that has a corresponding outgoing request. A proxy firewall is a gateway for a specific application protocol, such as FTP or web traffic. It acts as a middleman between communicating systems by breaking the session and re-establishing a new session to each system. Different proxies are required for each service allowed. DPI firewalls are the most advanced solution. Over time, security traffic have grown in such a way that the analysis of packets based on ports, protocol and addresses has become insufficient to ensure protection as attacks were increasingly targeted at the application level. In fact, more than 80% of all new malware and intrusion attempts are exploiting weaknesses in applications as opposed to weaknesses in networking components and services. Functions that were previously performed by separated devices are now included into DPI firewalls. This tight integration improved our overall system performance. For example, IPS, Intrusion Prevention System, is a technology that examines traffic flow to detect and block malicious activity. The inclusion of such technologies has added the concept of in-depth packet inspection and the ability to detect previously unseen threats. On the market we find two families of products, Unified Threat Management and Next Gen Firewalls. QTM appliances provide out-of-the-box policies, management and reporting tools designed to ensure simplicity and ease of deployment use and ongoing management. Next-gen firewall appliances cater to organizations that wish to customize their security policies and prefer manual reporting and management techniques. Next-gen firewalls provide robust access control on level 7 applications and makes decisions based on application, user and content. Indeed, there is an overlap in the underlying technology of these two families the technical data sheets tend to look similar. The performance gap has disappeared. Now the key differences are more around the quality of the features and the level of support. The main difference between next-gen firewall and UTM appliances is customization versus simplicity. Nowadays the differences are little more than marketing semantics. Typical functions of traditional firewalls such as stateful inspection and network address translation 
are still being used by current solutions, since they are the necessary control base for filter operations. Although NAT on its own is not considered as security features, hiding the addresses of protected devices has become an often used defense against network reconnaissance. DPI Firewalls offers many features that cannot be described in a few minutes, however I would like to draw your attention to three main functions. Many applications such as peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and social networking evade security mechanism by changing communications port and protocols. Application visibility and control can identify applications and filter traffic based upon specific policies. A next-gen firewall can work with user authentication services so the network manager can track and control access to services by users, regardless of the device used. Therefore, thanks to apps and users' identification, a modern firewall allows you to have awareness and control over what is happening on the network. Lastly, the Shared Treat Intelligence function aggregates, correlates and validates indicators across different feeds to ensure the widest possible visibility into emerging threats. As new attacks or vulnerabilities were discovered, the firewall was enhanced with new features and functionality. The choice of a firewall must go through a logical sequence of evaluations that aim to identify the most correct solution. As a first step, it is necessary to conduct a risk analysis and then define security requirements and policies. This can help you identify all the assets on your network that need protecting, so you can better optimize your firewall implementation. Then evaluate technical performance and the quality of services and support. You don't need to embrace the latest and most elaborated solution, choose what is sufficient for your network. Keep in mind that firewalls can be complex, it is not said that you have the skills to manage it correctly. Nowadays, firewalls are becoming more and more a subscription service rather than an appliance. Firewall deployment is based on things like what kind of firewalls you use, where those firewalls sit on the network, and how firewalls are configured. Use segmentation to split a network into subnetworks. This practice improves security and reduces congestion. Segmentation is typically achieved by a combination of firewalls and virtual local area networks. There are ways to completely circumvent firewalls to get into the system. For example, a student could bring in a compromised laptop or USB loaded with malware and let it spread throughout the system. To counter such risks, it may be necessary to create defense in depth using multiple layers of firewall. Firewalls shouldn't be your only line of defense, no matter how powerful they are. You still need antivirus as program, data backup, strong passwords and user training. Now let's see firewalls placement in network infrastructure. The simplest and most common option, especially in small environments, is the dual home firewall. The firewall is placed between the internet and the internal network segment, well suited for simple networks that don't offer any public internet services. It does not protect against internal threats. This is a solution to offer public services, such as a website. Any internet-facing server is placed in the demilitarized zone which is separated from both the internet and the trusted network by the firewall. If an attacker compromises one of these servers, it will still not have direct access to the protected networks. The use of two firewalls still allows the organization to offer services to internet users, but provides an added layer of protection. Basic firewall models often have a three interface limit, I hand the firewalls allow a large number of physical and virtual interfaces added through the use of VLAN. With a greater number of interfaces, you can implement many different security zones on your network. Firewalls can be a powerful security tool, 
but require maintenance. They have to be turned up and customized. They can be complex and require trained professionals. Next-gen firewalls, like almost any type of technology, are as useful as you make them. The more knowledge and effort put into understanding and deploying it, the more effective they are in mitigating risk and enforcing security policy. Check regularly at the firewall's log activity and look at the alarms dashboard. It's important to have a network audit trail for both permitted and denied traffic. The first detect network anomalies, while the second can help identify infected hosts. Threats evolve every day. If your firewall does not use a continuous update service, it will not provide an effective security improvement. Remember, security is a journey, not a destination. Thank you for your attention. Bye.